Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We've got a special surprise for you today. So as you just saw, we are here at the Rockwest Composites Manufacturing Facility. And as you probably know, composites are some of the most high-tech materials that humans currently make. So we do the carbon fiber, of course, but then there's also Kevlar and fiberglass and a bunch of other materials like that. So what we're going to be doing today, and like you saw in the title, and I do apologize for such an awful pun, but we're gonna be going from string to ring. So we're gonna be starting with the carbon fiber fabric. We're gonna be rolling that out, infusing it with resin, going through all the different processes we need to do that. And at the end, we're gonna be left with a plate of carbon fiber. We're gonna take that, cut it into the size we need, and then I'll take it over to my shop, and then we're gonna be crafting a ring out of it. So I thought this would be a really cool video to show you guys everything that goes into making your ring from start to finish. And we also do have a special announcement with this video, Rockwest, they're actually gonna be start selling some maker kits on their website. So I'll have more details about that at the end of the video. But basically, we've had so much interest from you guys that wanted to make rings and wanted to get into that yourselves. And so we're gonna be making that available for you guys. We're gonna have a special discount code and everything for you, so we'll have a link down in the description. But like I said, more on that later. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So stepping into the facility, the first thing you'll notice is that this place is massive and it's filled with about every piece of high-tech machinery you can even imagine, from filament winders to ovens. They even have a super powerful press for compressing some of the carbon fiber plate. And then along this back wall is their inventory, and this helps give you a sense of just how much carbon fiber they're able to produce here. They have so many different selections here. Every single kind of tube, every shape, every diameter. So they supply almost anything you could ever need that's made out of carbon fiber. And they do supply some of the world's biggest companies. So it's really cool to see and a lot of cool history here. So if you're interested in a carbon fiber project, maybe you wanna make a bike frame or something like that, you can bet that they've got all the materials you'll need on there. They not only have all the materials you'll need, but they also have a big selection of any of the tools and other things like that, like resins and quick connect features, everything you'd need to make a complete product. So now let's get started on making the actual sheet of carbon fiber. That's what we're here for. So we've got this massive sheet of glass and this is chemically treated to be non-stick so we can pull the carbon fiber away. And this glass is what gives the carbon fiber its glossy appearance when it's done. So it's very critical that this is a perfect sheet of glass. It has no fingerprints, nothing like that. So you'll see us wearing gloves and that's because we want the surface finish to be perfect. And then underneath that, there is a heated blanket. So it's custom made. And then they pick a very specific temperature to heat it to, to help cure the resin. And the first step you'll see we took is we're lining the entire glass sheet with this special tape. And this tape is designed to hold the vacuum seal and that's very critical for the resin infusion process. Then we'll be dragging out the whole sheet of the actual carbon fiber fabric. And in this video, to keep things quick, we're just going to be using one sheet. But to make thicker plates, the process is very similar. You just drag out multiple sheets of the carbon fiber fabric until you get the thickness you want. Then once we've got all the sheets of the carbon fiber fabric pulled out, we're going to be adding another layer and that's this beige fabric. And what this is, it's actually a fiberglass that's coated in Teflon. So that Teflon, that's the same stuff they use on nonstick pans. That'll keep it from sticking to the carbon fiber. So when they're done, it's called peel ply actually. And the reason for that is because it peels right off the carbon fiber. So without that Teflon coating, it'd be permanently bonded to that carbon fiber. So you definitely don't want that. And then the third layer we'll be adding, that's this red plastic mesh you'll see. So it's this thick mesh and it's designed to let the air flow through it. So it'll keep the plastic layer that we're putting on after this from sucking against the material and stopping the flow of the resin once we start infusing it. And then like I was saying, the final layer is this plastic film, and this is what's going to hold in that vacuum seal. So it's at this point that we've got all the base materials in place 
Now we're going to apply a vacuum to the whole thing. So we insert the vacuum tube and they have a massive vacuum generator and it's off site because it's so noisy. And so they have this vacuum tubing running through the warehouse and it connects to that vacuum. That way they just need to drop a line down to any of their workstations so they can do multiple sheets at once. And once that's connected, we just need to check for any leaks in it. So if there's a place where air is still getting in, we'll go run our fingers over the tape to fix it or whatever we need to do to make sure it stops leaking. And then we're ready to go ahead and mix up the resin. So this is a two part resin. The first part is the actual resin. The second part is the hardener for it. And so they measure it out. They use very specific measurements and it's a very specific ratio that you have to get perfectly. He even uses a syringe at one point to make sure it's down to the exact gram of resin that you'll need. And once we mix it all up, we take it over to a vacuum chamber. And this is to release all the air bubbles. So you can see all those rising up. That's actually trapped within the liquid. So that gets rid of all those. We don't want those appearing in the carbon fiber, obviously. So we got rid of all the bubbles. We're ready to introduce it to the carbon fiber. So on the opposite end of the table, we've got an inlet for the resin. So the vacuum's on the other end, and that's actually sucking the resin from one half across to the other. So you can see it starts from this one location and it slowly spreads across the whole table. Now once we've ensured that the entire plate has been properly infused with the resin, it's time for it to cure. So now over on the second sheet, we're actually ready to peel it off the glass and then we'll walk it over to a clear space and then we'll remove all the other backing materials from it and we'll be left with this perfectly clean, brand new sheet of carbon fiber. If you've never seen carbon fiber in real life, it's amazing. Each one of those woven threads has 12,000 threads of that super thin carbon fiber filament. So that reflects the light like crazy. And this is just a perfect sheet of the material. All right, so we are back from Rockwest. We've got our two slabs of carbon fiber here. In my left hand, I've got the unidirectional. In the right, we've got our standard twill weave. So that's what gives you the waves. But the unidirectional is actually stronger in most applications. They have all the carbon fiber strands go in one single plane. That way there's no weak points or kind of joints to it. Whereas when you've got the wave, it's really strong when it's at the crest of the wave, but when it curves, that's when it has kind of a joint and that's where it can bend and cause breaking. So in industrial use, this is actually what they typically use. I usually like using the twill because the waves, I think they look pretty cool, but the unidirectional is also really interesting. It's a really sharp, more professional look to it. So we're gonna be making a ring out of both. And to make things interesting in this video, instead of using a lathe, I'm actually going to mount my expanding ring mandrel into my drill press. So that's just gonna be right here actually. And the reason I'm I'm doing this is because I want this to be a project that you guys could do at home, especially because in this situation, these are actually available on Rockwest's site. So I will have a link down in the description to their website. You can actually buy these and do it yourself. So we're just doing as simple of a ring as we could do. We'll just take our diamond hole saws. They're not very expensive. So you can just grab a set of these on Amazon or somewhere. I should have these on my supplies website soon, by the way, but we're gonna cut a hole out here. That'll be for the middle of the ring and then here, and that'll be for the outside of the ring. And then we'll just have a general ring shape. And then we'll put that core on an expanding ring mandrel and we'll just put it in the drill press here. And it should be really simple from there. It's gonna be a little tricky because it's not horizontal like it is on the lathe, but same concepts apply. We're just gonna be sanding it down, finishing it up, polishing it, making it really smooth, looking good. And then we should be good to go from there. So we'll be doing two rings, one of each material. And the way I'll do it is I've got these diamond hole saws here and I already selected these. I've got this big bin over here with all the sizes in there, but I pre-selected all the sizes ahead of time. And so what you wanna do is get a set that has a little bit of room. You can see I'm wiggling it here. It's got room to spare, but not much. So we don't wanna have to do a ton of sanding. And so that's why I picked those sizes. And then the same thing for these. Both of these are just a size bigger than these two. 
And so this will make a slightly bigger ring. So we'll do the first one a little bit smaller and then the second one we'll use the bigger ones on. What I like to do first is I start out with the big one and I put it in the drill chuck here. I'll tighten it just slightly. I'm gonna take it right back out in a second. I'm just using this to line everything up. And then I'll take my piece of carbon fiber. And the idea here is that I can get it as really, really close to the edges. I'm not just guessing. You can actually see where it's going to cut. So that way I'm not wasting as much material and it'll actually drill a lot faster if you've got a little escape port on the side here for all of the dust to fling out of. So I've got that. I'm just holding it in place by putting a little down pressure on the drill chuck and then I'll put these clamps in place. Okay, so we've got it all in place. Now I can just take this right back out and then I'll put in this small one. And if you mess up, I've done it a few times where you accidentally drill the outside diameter first. You can do a few things like hollow it out on a lathe, but there's really no way to clamp it in place to hollow out the inside. So it is critical to make sure that you're doing the inside diameter first and then you switch over to the larger drill bit and then do the outside second. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and start drilling through the carbon fiber. You'll see I'll be using some water to keep everything cool and a kind of a rule of thumb, if the carbon fiber is too hot to touch, then it's too hot. You definitely don't want that resin to melt. If that can happen, you'll have what's called delamination where the layers will separate. And so that's definitely bad. Your ring will fall apart. So make sure to keep it plenty cool. But other than that, it's really straightforward. Okay, so I've got both of our blanks and we're gonna go ahead and use this piece of sandpaper to thin them out a little bit. I am really tempted to go use and cheat and use the belt sander over there. But like I said, I want this to be a video that any of you guys could do at home. So the only tool that we've used so far is a drill press. And it's even possible that you could get away by using a hand drill, but I definitely wouldn't recommend it, especially for the cutting out of the blanks because these do have to be pretty concentric, these two circles. This is a $50 drill press, so very cheap. I've got a better one over there but honestly this one especially for the videos it's a lot more handy to just be able to pick up and move around so I use that a lot and it's perfectly good that's all you'll need and then we'll come over here we've got our piece of sandpaper I'm going to do some wet sanding just because I don't like carbon fiber dust and then I'll just be sanding I'll do a figure eight because that will go faster and utilize more of the sandpaper but we'll just slowly sand these down they'll be thinner pretty soon and that'll make them a lot more comfortable to wear Okay, now we've got them thinned out quite a bit. That took a little while, but we are ready to go. So now I've got this expanding ring mandrel. And I know I just keep you guys waiting, but I seriously am, we're really close. I'm working with a supplier on getting these mandrels ready to sell on the website. So we're gonna have them on there. They're gonna be stainless steel. They're gonna be really nice. So they'll be definitely worth the wait. So you'll need one of these. They'll be available soon. I've told you before in the videos, but if you haven't already, go to my supplies website, just patrickadairsupplies.com, and then sign up for the newsletter. And that way we'll notify you when we come out with the mandrels. They should be, they might be a little bit limited when we first come out with them because we don't know what the demand will be exactly. So sign up for that newsletter and you should be able to get one just fine as long as you're quick. But as you're seeing here, I just putting the ring on the mandrel here. This is actually tight enough that it isn't falling out even though it's angled down. But we do need to go ahead and tighten it all the way just so it won't fall off when we're sanding. Um, when I'm done with it, I'll just be putting this ring on here. I'm actually wondering, I'm gonna try to take this off and fit them both on there. We could do them both at the same time, make it a little bit faster. So now the question will be if we can get it to tighten properly so that it clamps against both the rings because this one's already tight on the bottom, the one on the top isn't, so. 
Let's see, they're centered just fine. Some materials you have to be a little bit careful because they can be brittle or fragile and they might crack. But carbon fiber is really strong, so I'm not really worried about that here. So that's going pretty well. And yeah, that's on there really good. So awesome, this is gonna save us a bunch of time so we can just go through the sanding steps once. I do need to be careful because if I'm trying to sand the top of this bottom ring here and I actually touch it right here, this might get neglected. So I need to be careful to sand them each individually, make sure they get all the attention they need. And we should end up with some really nice surface finishes on these. Okay, now we would be ready to do the polishing. And what we do is I've just got these two paper towels. They've got compound already on them. This one has white polishing compound. This one has the green polishing compound. The green is the high polish, this is the medium polish. So we just do the white and then the green. But I do wanna put a satin finish on this unidirectional carbon fiber. I think that'll look really nice. So I'm gonna take this one off and we'll polish I guess what I need to do, so I polish this up to a thousand grit with the sandpaper. Now I'm going to take it back down to 400 because it is a little bit glossy the way it is now, even though we didn't use the polishing compounds yet. So just really quickly. Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was going for. So I'll try to do a little compare and contrast once I've got the other one all polished. So just using, like I said, white and then the green. Okay, that's done. And that has actually a surprisingly good finish for the tools and methods we're using. Didn't use my buffing wheel or anything. This is just polishing compound on a paper towel, sanding right on here, and that I don't see any imperfection at all. So that's really impressive actually. So these are mostly done, at least the outside is, but now we gotta take care of the inside. So I'll just be taking some sandpaper. I'll start with some really rough and we'll just wanna break this edge here. And then by hand, I'll just go through all the different grits and we'll try to get it as smooth as possible. I could, when I'm done, use a Dremel with some polishing compound and polish that up. And many of you probably already have Dremels. They're not very expensive, but we're gonna stick with just the minimum amount of tools we can. So we're gonna leave it the way it is and it won't affect the way it looks, obviously, because it'll be on your fingers. So we just won't worry about that. All right, we've got these all finished and sanded up. I'm gonna go wash my hands as well as the rings, get them all, get them all cleaned off, and then we'll show them off in some pictures and videos and we'll be done. So here the rings are totally finished. You can see the unidirectional ring. That's got that satin finish on it. It looks really good, nice and stealthy look it has to it. And then the twill weave ring, that's got the high gloss on there. And I really like that. It will reflect lighting, stand out just a little bit better. So it all just kind of depends on the look you're going for. And one thing that is cool about carbon fiber is that it's so easy to change the finish on it. So if I don't like the high gloss one day, I can go and use 400 grit sandpaper, take it right back down to a satin finish. And then the next day I can literally polish it up just as easily. So it's really fun and something you can do at home. So it's a great project. And like I said, we've got the materials available on Rockwest Composites website. I've got a link to that in the description. And they're actually doing a discount for February and that's just in celebration of launching the product. So check out the link below. It's actually a really good discount. I think it's almost 30% off. So if you've been wanting to get into ring making, this is a great way to get started. Hey everyone, just wanna say thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, you can consider giving it a like as well as subscribing. You can see there's a PAD logo that just popped up on your right hand side there. If you click that, that'll take you to the link to subscribe. And then right below me, that's a link to my website. So if you like the rings that I make, that's where you can buy those. And then in this bottom right hand corner here, that's actually a video that YouTube's suggesting to you personally. So they take a look and see what you'd be interested in and then pick one of my videos that they think you'd enjoy most. Once again, thank Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.